Dear students, welcome and thank you for tuning in to this video. I am Dr. Lyle Zerbi and I'm still talking about lecture one from the product design development. This is the third video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the role of structured methods and why it's important to, to have this mindset that any design and pro development process is a structured process. And there are, we have steps and activities to follow. And also I'm going to talk about the benefit of integration, of having people of different backgrounds working on, with us on the, the, pro, the project, our web design uh, project that we are working on. So what, what, is, what is the role of structured methods in product design development? People, people usually look at design activities as being creative efforts, which is fine. Uh, and that's true, actually. Therefore, they will resist the notion that structure structure can and should be applied. However, uh, from our point of view, when we look at product design development, it's often procedural uh, with a set of activities that need to, to be actually followed. And also in this process, we need to create documentations and we need to study uh, our process and keep modifying it and improving it uh, with time. So if you want to do documentation and um, you know, studying and improving uh, the process, it has to be structured and ha we have to follow a set of steps. And that's what our textbook is actually providing. So in this textbook uh, that we're using in, for this class, we are going to follow the steps are laid out in the book uh, from starting with the op uh, opportunity identification, product planning, identifying customer needs and sp product specification and concept generation. And that's what we're going to follow step by step. And I see that I feel that the textbook is really helpful and useful and it, I recommend uh, anyone uh, who's interested in engineering and design is to, to have a copy of this book. It's well written and you can follow it easily. So I hope that this built the case that design development is a structured process. Uh, if we follow the steps and, the acti and we did the activities uh, in sequence, uh, we will start with a need, identifying a need and we'll end up with a working prototype. And that is the target of our class. So the last thing that I want to touch base on in, in this lecture is actually um, talking about the benefits of integration, which is working with people from different backgrounds and experiences. So best practice today always involve a team uh, of people representing the necessary disciplines and skills to perform your task. And that's what we call a cross-functional team. We can call it diversity, whatever you want to call it. But to me is actually I, I benefit from diversity and I learn from other people. And uh, this is an educational process and we are in a class that we want to learn as much as, as skills as possible. So in a product design development, we have three main functions that need to be present. So you need designers and they usually engineers. We need people in marketing. And when I talk about marketing, we, mention, we, we focus on uh, the interaction with people to acquire data uh, through surveys and make evaluation of, them, of the needs and you know when you do testing also to get feedback so marketing is is a lot about interacting with people collecting data and information analyzing it and and building a strategy for marketing and if someone in the team is good in working with people and good at statistics is, is this is actually the function that he can um, add to that function and the last function we are we want to have in our team is manufacturing someone who's good in manufacturing and when we mean by man what we mean by that is someone who's good in bu good in buying parts uh, good in assembly uh, and have um, a, vis a vision on how things in the future could uh, be designed as a assembly lines and production lines uh, all that thing so these three these three functions actually they're very important to be in our design team. And then we look at the, how the design team is actually structured. We have something called the core team and the extended team. The core team is uh, made of team leader. You have a mechanical designer or mechanical engineer, industrial designer, marketing professionals for surveys. And then you have manufacturing engineer, engineers in order to be able to identify what parts do we need, what parts we, should bu could, we could buy, what parts we should build. And then you have the purchasing specialist to buy your component. So we, ha we can have one member in the team that he can perform multiple functions in the core team and electronics designer. And so I can see that electronics, mechanical, industrial designer, uh, they are all engineers. And then you have the mar manufacturing and purchasing to be that manufacturing part. And then you have the marketing professional who's the one who's going to be doing the surveys and acquiring uh, data from uh, users. And also when we talk about the extended team, 
uh, anything we the core team wants to outsource and we can acquire skills and services from so you can have finance sales legal um, and as part of your extended team and this is uh, is, a, is a good way of looking of how to structure your team at the beginning because i will ask each member to focus on one of the three functions and you need to explain why you should you could be uh, that member and you need to explain the skill set that you have that can be beneficiary for for the whole team i hope that was helpful in just laying the ground and describing the entire process of uh, product design development that we're going to be following this is the end of lecture one i'm going to create uh, more lectures and more videos for you to watch thank you for watching and till the next time bye